Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I do believe it's 6.30. It's time to begin our service. Let's stand. Let's go before the Lord. Let's give him the praise and glory that belongs to him today. Let's thank him for bringing us here in our right mind. Oh, for putting food on our table, clothes on our back. Let's thank him for his precious spirit here today. God, move in this house. God, touch each life under the sound of my voice tonight. Me and, oh God, restore, Lord. Accomplish your divine will. In the name of Jesus, we pray and ask. Amen, amen. This time, Sister Eva, she's going to sing.
and he's yes. like God. Yes. God, we came to praise you, God. Yes. We came to thank you, Lord, for being our God, being our Jehovah Jireh, yes. being our provider, Lord, being our king, oh God, being a very present help in a time of need, God. You know, the Lord still inhabits the praises of his saints. He said that everything that have breath, praise you, the Lord. Begin to praise him for who he is. Praise him for what he wants to do in your life. God, open up the gates. Watch him break every chain. He'll do it. Amen, amen. This time you may be seated. I'd like to welcome each one to God's house tonight. I'm looking forward to what God has in store. Amen. amen. Every service is different. I'm looking forward to seeing God move in a very special way in each life. And this time we'd like to wait on you for the Sunday night tithe and offering. All Christians pay tithe. And cheerfully give any offering as unto the Lord. Yes. Amen. The offering tonight goes to meet the needs yes. of the house of the Lord. I'd like that sister every member if you'll pray for the gift and giver, please. Gracious Lord, we do thank you for the honor and the privilege to be in your house. We pray that you bless both the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible's handy, or if you want to look on the screen with us, you're more than welcome to. I'd like to turn your attention tonight to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning here at verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning here at verse 7. Paul the Apostle speaking here. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, mm -hmm. which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also that love is appearing. Aren't you thankful, amen, that heaven is for everybody? Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. While that Luke is with me, take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. We want to use verse 10 and 11 tonight for our text verse. For demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. With the help of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, and your help, we want to preach on a message entitled, Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Amen. Can't Amen. Stop, Come Won't on. Stop. Sister, so remember, if you'll pray over the message messenger and those who are listening tonight. Gracious Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to be in your presence and be in your home. God, we love you, and we ask, God, that you will move by your Holy Spirit. Yes. God, touch each yeah. heart, Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to be the real preacher today. God, help Pastor to say exactly what you have for each and every person. And God, give us all, Lord, hearts to receive it, God, and to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can't stop, won't stop. The Apostle Paul is here on death row. Mm -hmm. And he's telling his young understudy, Timothy, Writers say he was about the age of 22 as a young pastor, pastor at church. He was telling him to, you got to fight. Yes. He was yes. telling him, you're going to have to fight out here. Amen. See, we've got to stop looking at church as a place of entertainment on, in our man. society. That's right. That's church right. is a training camp. Yes. In church, yes. we learn how to fight against principalities uh -huh. and wickedness in high places. Yes. Church, it means call out. It's designed to encourage us and to show us that we can make it for God. Amen. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. The good fight. I fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. He was saying that he had to wrestle with Satan yes. 
And he defeated Satan in that he established churches, amen. You know, the devil is not going to win this thing. Come on. God has given us a promise that he's going to build his church, amen. Yeah. All he's looking is, looking for is some people with some go ye in them. Some people with some fight in them. Yeah. He said you got to fight the good fight. You may get knocked down, but don't get knocked out. Come on. Amen? Yeah. We may get knocked down, but we ain't knocked out. Right. We may go through battles. We may fight against the devil, but we still are winning because we're in Christ. Amen? Amen. Paul said it this way. He fought the good fight. That means he put Christ first mm -hmm. in his life. He never quit. He was strong in the grace of God. He kept so winning mm -hmm. by committing the truth to faithful men. Yeah. He endured hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. If you don't yeah. be a soldier, that means you got to be disciplined. That's right. That, that's, right. That, that's what disciple right. means, disciplined right. one. Mm -hmm. Amen. He wasn't entangled with the affairs of this life. You know, we, sometimes we get all wrapped up in worldly affairs. Don't amount to anything on the other side of eternity. I like that 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 uh that story, that illustration I always hear. I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. Come on. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the things that don't matter on the other side of eternity, amen. amen. And so Paul, he was letting us letting us know that he wasn't entangled with the affairs of his life. See, we're trying very hard here at New Testament Christian Church of Portland to walk in his footsteps. He talks about being profitable. Mm -hmm. Paul told your Timothy, his son in the faith, to come quickly to him. Yes. Don't be ashamed of my bonds. Don't be ashamed of what I'm going through. I'm locked up right now because I was preaching about Jesus. Yes. Don't be ashamed of that, amen. amen. He said, don't be ashamed of the gospel, amen. Christian, amen. you ought not be ashamed of what delivered you, amen. amen. We know that Paul was on death row and that he had been forsaken by Demas, mm -hmm. having loved this present world. Demas loved this present world, so he had forsook Paul. And the Bible tells us that others were listed in verse 10, but they were still working for God. Verse 11 said, only Luke is with me. Luke wrote the, the gospel of Luke and also the book of Acts. Luke was a physician. He was a, a helper in the work of God. And then he said this, take Mark and bring him with thee. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. Let's talk about the word profitable. Come on. Come we, want on. A, we want profits. Don't we, don't we want money? How many like come money? On, Amen. Come on, come we on. want to see a return on investment. Yes. The word profitable here means useful. Mm -hmm. yes. Paul tells Timothy, get Mark. He's useful for the ministry. This was John Mark, the nephew of Barnabas. Not sure if you're a Bible reader, but Barnabas, he was also an, an apostle, and he worked with, with Paul the apostle. And who after, so John Mark, his nephew, uh, uh, John, this was John Mark, whose uncle was Barnabas, who after having failed to continue with Paul as a young man, was now a steady and faithful worker. So things had happened to John Mark. He had went through some things. Yeah. I've never been through some things. Some things that got you, that rocked your boat. Yes, yes. John Mark had went through some things. Amen. He was fighting mm -hmm. the enemy of his soul. Yes. You see, the battlefield starts right there in the heart. Amen. God is competing, and the enemy is competing for your time. Yes, he is. God is competing, and the enemy is competing for your finances. Mm -hmm. God is competing, and the enemy is com uh, competing for your joy. The devil wants to kill, steal your joy from you, amen? Yes, but Christ is trying to come to you to give you more joy. Amen. Christ is trying to come to you tonight to give you more hope. Uh -huh. Jesus wants to give you an abundant life. He don't yes. want to take anything from you. He wants to add to your life. Come on now. That's so true. I'm bringing this out to show you that he didn't have to quit from the get-go. We all fail. Let's just be, be real. Cut the baloney. Yeah, come on. But he didn't have to quit. From the get-go. John Mark. Mark, he didn't have to quit. He was profitable, but he stopped. He, he, he was unprofitable at a, at a point in his life. God, he, was, he stopped allowing God to use him. Oh, Lord. We read in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. And took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Barnabas and Saul, Saul, the apostle Paul, they took with them, after they had returned from their first work, their first, their first trip working for God, they took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Mm -hmm. He's talking about John Mark. Mark went with Paul on his first missionary journey. Mm -hmm. 
But somewhere along the lines, he got homesick. Ended up departing. I'm talking about being useful. About being profitable. For some reason, doing Mark's endeavor for God, he decided to let the enemy get the best of him and run him off. He decided to let the enemy, see the devil plays mind games. Yes, he does. That's what he does. Been talking about that for the, for, the, for the last couple of services. Oh, you don't need the church. Man, they don't really like you. And you don't need all that church in your life. You don't need to come all the time. Yeah, no. The devil plays with our minds. He gets us against the brother. He gets us against Jesus, amen. But Jesus is letting us know, amen, that he's praying for us. Isn't that what he told Peter? He said, I pray for you that your faith fail not. But let's look at this real quick. For some reason, during Mark's endeavor, for God, he decided to let the enemy get the best of him and run him on. After seeing the hand of God move in Acts chapter 13, the deputy of the country that they were called that uh, they requested for Barnabas and Saul. He had desired to hear the word of God. So they're preaching. They're setting up a church. This deputy gets wind that these men have the word of God. And so he requests to, he requests to, uh, to see Barnabas and Saul to hear the word of God. You know, faith comes by hearing. Yeah. Hearing the word of God. And so Elemis the sorcerer withstood them and seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Elemis the sorcerer, this fortune teller. He withstood the man of God, Paul the Apostle. So you got to stop playing with them Ouija boards. That's it. You got to stop looking for them signs. I'm a Taurus and all these other things. Come on now. Hey, huh? Right. Huh? You with us? Yeah. We got to stop looking for all these signs. Elements yeah. didn't like the message that Paul had. And so Elements, amen, he decided, amen, to talk against the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, see when you talk against the gospel of Jesus Christ, you make God your enemy. Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, Oh, full of subtlety and all mischief, thou, ch thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of God? Mm -hmm. He said, Man, you're full of tricks. You know, a lot of people play games yes, with God, when God ain't playing games. A lot of people play church with God, but God ain't playing church. Mm -hmm. This man was full of subtleties, full of tricks, full of crap. Full of deceit, full of mischief, full of evilness. He wanted to pervert the white right ways of the Lord. Yeah. Paul showed him though who was really a man of God. Okay. Okay. So he blinded him for a season. But two things happened. The deputy believed that Jesus is the way, and the Bible tells us that he was astonished. And the doctrine of the Lord. The Bible says he would believe, amen, and he was also astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. The deputy could not believe what he had just witnessed. And so he decided, amen, to get signed up, amen, to be a soldier in the Lord, amen. Mark didn't feel the same way. So you got one man, he believes, amen, on Christ. The deputy, but Mark, he like, wait a minute, it's too much persecution. This is a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> I came to church, but I didn't really want to get something from God. I was just trying to check out the block. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be preaching by sin, preacher. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to be trying to tell me how I can how to live for God, preacher. Yeah. Come on. Come on, sir. People come to church for all different reasons. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. He said this church and these preachers are too much for me. The Holy Ghost was moving in Asia, but Mark decided to leave. The Bible says John departed from them and returned to Jerusalem. What happened? He got homesick. Uh -huh. Talk about John Mark. Talking about being profitable and how he stopped being profitable to God. And so we can't quit, folks, when we're astonished. When you're amazed at the doctrine of the Lord, so you got to read the Bible, amen. You got to read the word of God, amen, so God can deal with you on a different level. When you're astonished at the word of God, you can't quit. When you, can't, when you know what God has done in your life, you can't quit. Right. When you can't help but right. speak these things and see you've seen and heard, you can't quit. Amen. Folks, when God has done something real in your life, amen, you ain't going to quit. Amen. On the other hand, the deputy was astonished at the Lord, doctrine of the Lord. It's amazing to me. You can have the same parents, yeah. two, two kids, <laughs> yet they're totally different in every way. The Christian ought not be like that. That's right. If we got the same Bible, 
The same Holy Ghost baptism. Come on. Come on. The same doctor. Should we be the same? Amen. I know we're different in personality, but should we serve the same God? Amen. Instead of compromising, we should. If there's only one way, amen, why are we coming up with two or three ways to serve God? Come on, come on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean, folks? God ain't confused about what he said. No. <laughs> he knows what he wants. Yes. A holy and acceptable sacrifice. Amen. That's our reasonable service. Yes. Right. Folks, it's only right that we give God a portion of what he's given us. Yes. I'm not just talking about finance. I'm talking about our time, our lives. Amen. We got to give God back what he gave us. Yes. Right. Amen. We ought to be living for God because Christ died for us, right? That, that's what the Bible says. Amen. That's the incentive. That's the motivation to serve God. Yes. Right. We're serving the same God, reading the same Bible. Bible. We all ought to be astonished at the same doctrine. What are we saying? It, what we are saying is this. You can't pack it up and go back to the world when you're astonished, mm -hmm. when you're amazed, when God has done something in your life, when he's changed your inward nature, when you know from, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, amen, you're not the same person anymore. When you stop cussing, amen, when you stop cursing God in your heart, amen, when you stop drinking that wine and that whiskey, amen, when you've been yes. filled with the spirit of God, you'll be astonished. Yes, 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 yes. We've got to pray and ask God to help us be astonished one more time at his doctor. Sometimes we need to, uh, uh, to press the restart button. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. we need a fresh touch, amen. Yeah. Sometimes we get lethargic in our worship, amen. Sometimes we get dead in our worship, amen. Because we killed God, amen. We quenched the spirit, amen. Don't quench the spirit today, amen. You get excited about oh, serving the living God today. Praise God. Praise God. We're serving the living God, not the dead God. Come on. Say the Catholic Church, this is a full gospel church, amen. My God ain't on the cross, amen. My God is seated in heavenly places. He's alive in my life tonight. Come on, amen. Are you with us? Amen. God's alive, amen. Yeah, he is. If I got that same God living in me, amen, that means I'm dead. The old me is dead. I got a new nature. He said, behold, all things have become new. Uh, and, uh, all things have become new, amen. Uh, but all things are passed away, amen. I'm thankful today, amen. We can have a new nature in Jesus. Amen. That's right. We've got to pray until we're studies one more time. Right. Jesus said it this way, amen. These things I have written unto you. Mm -hmm. That means you got to read it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't be tossed with every wind of doctrine and all these old wise fables like we talked about this morning. Yeah. Amen. People want to look at their horoscope and read the word of God. Come on. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Why in the world would you, why in the world would you want to read anything that got horror in it? <laughs> you want what you want to be scared for? <laughs> why I want to be scared? Because <laughs> uh, amen on me. Come on now. He said, these things I have written, I've spoken. I've spoken these things I have spoken unto you. That in me ye might have peace. Yes. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Yes. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Uh -huh. Let's talk about this verse. Let's dissect it a little bit. I mean, I like dissecting things and breaking things down, going us down. Let's talk about it. In Christ, he said, in Christ, we have peace. Yes. In Christ, he said, you might have peace. You got to let God do his job. God ain't going to take nothing from you. You don't want it. God say, oh, well, I'll give it to the next person. We got to let Christ work this peace in our lives. Amen. Peace is quietness of the soul. Tranquility, stillness, calmness. Don't be anxious. Folks get all wrapped up, and I, I'm not throwing stones at you, amen. Sometimes we get wrapped up and get our minds, when we get our minds off God. Yeah. You ever notice when you get your mind off God, when you're out of church for a long time, all these different things start going on, amen, you get anxiety. Yes. Why do you think it's killing the way it is, amen? Because we want your time, you want one more offering, no, so you can have peace in yourself. Amen. We want people to have peace in their soul, quietness, calmness. Folks, it's something about it, man, when everything is right with you and God Almighty. Yeah. That brings about peace when you're in harmony with God. Yeah. When you're out of bounds with God and you're wrestling, amen, and want to do your will, and you know good what God told you to do, his will, amen, you don't have peace. That's right, that's right. And so what do we do, amen, when we don't have this peace and we really want to do something? God, I really want to do it. I really want to go. I told you no. All right, go ahead and go. That's what he told Balaam. 
Babe, I told you not to go. I don't want you to go preach the preach. I, I don't want you to come curse Israel. I don't want you working with him. Fine, go ahead and go. In the world, you should have tribulation. In the world, you should have tribulation. Trouble, affliction, persecution. Jesus doesn't promise us an easy life. It's important for you to understand that. He said in the world you're going to have tribulation. Yes. Persecution, you're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be easy. Right. But God's going to be with you. Amen. He said in me, we, gotta, we can stay in Jesus even in the world. Yes. We can still have this peace with God. I'm telling you, man, you can have peace even when everything around you is falling apart. Amen. I remember when I was in Bible school. I was doing the will of God. All these things, I, I, was, I, I was doing the will of God. I went involved in sin, all these things. And I lost my grandma and my uncle a day apart. My grandma is my parent, mm -hmm. the one that raised me. Come on. I got the news. It was like 5 o'clock in the morning. All I could do is drop to my knees. I started praying, crying, weeping to God. Mm -hmm. And I felt the peace of God mm -hmm. in my heart. Yes. I knew everything was going to be all right. Yes. I knew he was with me. I felt the peace of God in that room. I mean, you just can't buy that out of a cigarette or a bottle of Bud I mean, Bud Watson. You just can't get that kind of peace, amen. I'm talking about the peace of God flooded my heart like never before. I knew everything was going to be all right, that he was going to be with me. That's what I'm talking about. He doesn't promise us an easy life, but he does promise that he'll go with us. He said, be of good cheer. I have over already overcome the world. I have already overcome every battle that you're going through. Yes. He said, be of good cheer. Take courage. Uh -huh. Take courage. Sure. Take courage in the word of God. Man, just thank God, amen, for the battle, amen. He said he already overcame, amen. We got to get our minds off the corner of things, amen, and get our minds on the heavenly vision tonight. Amen. Judge Mark quit the work of God and went back to what he always was doing. Could you imagine how his godly mother felt? His mother was godly, a Christian. Yes. The lady, no doubt, was heartbroken. Maybe she was embarrassed because her son had quit the ministry. Yes. You no, know, she had bragged on him. Man, my boy, he working with his uncle, Uncle B, Uncle Barnabas, with his uncle. He working with the Apostle Paul. They're sitting doing their first missionary trip. And then, lo and behold, here's John Mark with his pole, probably, in, 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 a, in a sack around it with some clothes in it. Is that, is that my boy? He walking like him. <laughs> that looks like him. What you doing here, son? Yes, yes. What's going on? I know she was heartbroken. The same Mark knew the power of God and knew the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about this fellow he quit. He knew the power of God and the power of prayer. Yes. Peter was miraculously delivered from prison by the angel of the Lord. The Bible tells us his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did and said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Peter didn't fully understand what was going on. He thought he was dreaming or he thought some kind of vision was taking place. But then God began to break down the walls in his life, amen. He got to the first the first and the second war, maximum security. Yeah. God broke that wall down. He got to the third war, amen, that iron gate, amen, and then God broke that down and led him back into the city, amen, and I'm trying to tell you that Peter came to himself. The Bible says he came to himself. Yes, yes. Folks, you'll come to yourself, amen, when you allow God to break them chains out of your life, amen. Man, God, you help me forgive, amen. God, you help me love, amen. God, you help me get hate out of my heart. God, you help me get prejudice out of my heart. God, you're alive tonight. Amen, amen, amen. That's the kind of God we serve. Yes. Peter said, now I know of a surety that the, angel, that the Lord has sent this angel and have delivered me out of the enemy's hand. Now I know of a surety, where surety in a, means in a reality. For real, for real, as the uncle said. I know for real, for real, that the Lord hath delivered me. 
I know, amen, my Redeemer lives. Are y'all telling me? I know, amen, that it was nobody but the hand of God that delivered me out of the hand of the line. When I was supposed to be in that car wreck that night, when I was supposed to be locked up in prison, amen, God delivered me out of the hand of the enemy, amen. amen. God's still delivering. That's the kind of God we serve. How many times, amen, have you seen the grace of God on your life, amen? How many times has God spared you, amen, when you know you didn't deserve it, amen, when you know you was wrong, amen? It was the grace of God that delivered you today. Yes, yes, yes. And as the saints of God are praying, they're praying, amen, on one accord. This is the same chapter, Acts 13. I mean, Acts chapter 12. They're praying, amen, for Peter to get free. And guess who walks up? <laughs> Peter. He knocks on the door of Mark's mom's house. And he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. It's a blessing to have people praying for you. Amen. Oh, yeah. The family of God, we pray for you. Amen. We love you. You're not in this thing alone. None of you are right. in this alone. Don't ever let the devil isolate you Amen. and to get you to think that you're by yourself because you're not. Amen. We're praying for one another, amen. Praying for those that don't come, those that come sometime. We're praying for everybody, amen. We're praying, amen, that men, amen, will come to the knowledge of the truth, amen. Don't really take my word for it, amen. Serve God in a reality, amen. Know of a surety, amen, that the Lord can deliver, amen. He can deliver from sin. He can deliver from depression. He can deliver from oppression. The Buddha says that's free. It's free indeed, amen. amen. Peter knocked on the door of the gate and Rhoda heard his voice. But she opened, knocked the door of the gate for gladness. The girl was so happy, man. She thought she thought it was some kind of dream or some kind of angel or something like that. So she ran back and said, man, Peter's at the door. <laughs> Come on. I was like, they laughed that girl in school. They said, you're crazy, Rhoda. God don't answer prayers. We just play at church. <laughs> God don't really answer prayers. We just play like, like he does. I mean, that was a surprise because God answers your prayer. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. God still answers prayer. Yes, he does. Peter kept knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Mm -hmm. So you don't quit when you're astonished. Uh -huh. You don't quit when you're amazed. Mm -hmm. Don't let the gospel get dead to you tonight. Amen. Don't let Jesus, don't let, the, don't let it be the same old, same old tonight. Amen. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Amen. You got to kick your shoes off sometime. Amen. You got to run around the church and service sometime. Amen. Sometimes you got to just shout. Amen. Because God is good. Amen. And I mean he's good all the time. Amen. Not sometimes. Not when we feel like it. God, he's still good tonight. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's how y'all just run around and shout. Mm -hmm. When you're astonished, amen, you're amazed. You're, one, and you're, 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 you're throwing it to ah. Uh -huh. Sometimes people think you're crazy. Yeah, they do. Because you're astonished yeah, at the dawn of the Lord. When you allow God to come into your life, you will absolutely do some miraculous things mm -hmm. in your life. Yes, and so much that you'll be, guess what? Astonished. Yes. You'll be amazed. Oh, yes. You'll be out of one's mind, amen. You'll think, wow, what in the world is going on? Yeah. I can't even recognize who I was. Come on. My cousin was talking about the other day, he tried to give me the rehearse this rap verse I used to I used to quote to him, I used to mess with him. And they one of his friends. And I was like, wow, that used to be me. I can't believe that. Yeah. And it was just kidding, it was just joking, joking on Facebook or whatever the case is. But I just can't believe what God has done in my life. Yeah. I can't I, I don't even recognize that person I used to be in, man. I don't even recognize that fellow with his pants sagging, amen. That fellow that was disrespectful, amen. I don't even recognize him. Why? Because I'm astonished. Yeah. I'm astonished. Yeah. I'm amazed at the doctrine of the Lord, amen, how God can change somebody, amen, who will believe, amen, who will plant his seed in their heart, amen. Plant, don't plant the word of God in your heart. Don't plant the look of, in your heart. Don't plant the depression in your heart. Plant the word of God in your heart that you may grow and be a Christian today. Amen. That's right. Mark sees all this take place. He sees God answering prayer, mm -hmm. yet he still quits. See, answering prayer just simply ain't enough. You got to be astonished. If you, if you don't want to quit tonight, you got to be astonished. You need to find something to stoke your fire, amen, so you can get a hold of the doctrine of the Lord, amen. It ain't a preacher gassing you up, amen. It's God and the Holy Ghost, amen. You let the Holy Ghost have his way tonight, amen, and stop looking like that, looking at uh, like a boat on a pickle and get involved in the service and be astonished. Amen. amen. we got to be astonished. That's right. That's we got to be amazed. Right. I'm not saying this as just a shout. The inward, but it's the, I mean the outward, but the inward man has to let go. Yes. 
The inward man has to let go because the biggest people that say amen and amen live like the devil. Come so on. it ain't all that either. Come on. Come on. <laughs> amen. I'm talking about a heart change, yeah. an inward change to where a man or woman gets out of the way and let God and the Holy Ghost do their job. Yes, yes, yes. He had a godly background, seemingly. His mother was a Christian. Man, John Mark, he ever had a pastor that prayed for him. He had a pastor that cared about him. He had a pastor that loved him. First Peter chapter 5, verse 13 says, The church that is at Babylon, elected uh, together with you, salute you, and so do with Marcus, my son. This was Peter's convert. Amen. This was Peter's convert. His, 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 uh, 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 somebody he birthed in the faith, amen. This was Peter's uh, uh, protege, if you will. John Mark was a convert of Peter. Come on. Imagine this. How hurt Peter was when he found out the news. Yes. See, when you quit, you don't just quit on yourself. You quit on everybody that invested in you. I told him the story today, this morning, about how I quit. I fell by the wayside. Fell by, falling by the wayside means quitting, basically. But dressing up your language, not saying you're quitting. Saying you're changing direction, say, saying God's leading to somewhere else. Come well, on. we got the same Bible, same word of God, same Holy Ghost baptism. Why would God lead you somewhere else? Come on. And we got the truth here. Why would God lead you somewhere else? So people tell others this junk because they don't want to say I quit. I'm not serving God anymore. I don't want to serve God. So they come up with all these excuses. Guess what? To justify themselves. Yes. To excuse themselves. Instead of trusting Jesus for their justification. Trusting Jesus to excuse them, amen? They want to excuse themselves. Are you with us? Come on. Mr. John Mark said, Punk, man, I'm just going to go home for a little bit. Uh, I'll get everything squared away. Uh, I just need to take a break. Yeah. You ain't got time to take a break. We're fighting a warfare. You got you sitting there playing cards on your on your laptop, and why everybody else we out we we're out here getting our head knocked off by the devil. We need prayer power, man. We need soul winning power, man. We need Christians joining in a fellowship and get stirred up for God. Amen. If you want to save this city, amen, you can't be sitting around playing, playing Tetris. This is serious business, amen. 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 We're talking about winning the city to Jesus. Yes. Aren't you astonished, amen? Did God do something really in life? Yes. And the reason you did, amen, is to show somebody else that light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. You got to be astonished. Mark not only failed his mother, his pastor, he failed his mother, mm -hmm. who loved him, yes. who no doubt prayed for him and took care of him. He failed his pastor, Pastor Peter. Felt the Apostle Paul, felt his Uncle Barnabas. And he felt those who looked up to him. You know, people are looking at you. Yes, you name yes. the name of Christ. Yes. People are going to look at you with a microscope. Yes. When you name Christ, it's just Lord and Savior. Yes. They're going to scrutinize everything you do. Everything. Did you just cuss just then? I thought you was a... And no, I just said the apples are red. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to scrutinize everything you do. Yes. And the moment you give them a reason to blaspheme the name of God, you lost your testimony. Yes. You know how hard it is to get your testimony back? Yes. Yes. After you've damaged it, uh -huh. folks, what I'm telling you tonight is you don't have to quit. That's it. You don't have to go back to the world and say, I'm okay, you're okay. No, that's not the case. Every church ain't the same. I wish it was, but it's not. Amen. The devil's a liar. That's what the devil, that's one of his, his biggest weapons. Oh, the church down the street, the same way you leave. Come on. Because you want something easier. You want that Burger King type of stuff. Have it your way, have it my way. <laughs> People don't like you preaching against sin. You know, you know how we know we're in the latter part, the latter days? Because people are quitting. They're departing from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Spirits that they agree with. Right. And doctors of devil. Come on. Devils. Mm -hmm. The moment when you think it's just something to do, church is just something to do. It's nothing to Christianity. I'm okay, you okay. We start making inroads to go back to the world. It don't happen in one fell swoop. Anybody you know that went back to the world that was truly a born again Christian? Truly. I'm talking about truly, not just going coming to church. I'm talking about a real blood brought Christian. There is a difference. So I'm gonna call everybody brother and sister. Everybody ain't a brother or sister. Yeah. Somebody just start coming to church one day, huh? You don't know them. Yeah. You don't know their testimony. And so we'll see. Yeah. I ain't trying to be judgmental, but we'll see. I'm just using discernment. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Right? We'll see. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. We'll see. I don't know. Yes. 
I know what God did in my life, and I know I was in sin. Do you know you was in sin? Did you, did you have a definite day when you got out of sin, when you changed allegiance? Well, if you never had a definite day where you can go back and you can say, I know, I, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and he took me out of sin, well, you never got saved. Come on now. Going to the cross is death, dying to self, yes. not living after you pick, leave the cross. That's right. So it's death. We got to die at the cross. That's why all these churches, a lot of these churches, amen, they got these programs, these external programs. Why? And, and when really, they, and they're putting a band-aid on something that needs surgery. Come on, come on now. Kwanzaa, whatever it is. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> all these programs. They do all these programs outside of the doctrine of doc, what's what, what this is the doctrine of the Lord. Isn't that a program? Yeah. Isn't that astonishing? Isn't that enough? I'm not saying don't do the other way, man, the team challenge and all these different things. But what happened, amen, to the born again program, amen? That's the program I want to be a part of. What happened to the uh, the Holy Ghost field program? What happened to the devil stumping program? What happened to the sin fighting program? That's the kind of program yes. we need in the Christian church. Yes. I'm yes. astonished. As many were astonished at me, his visage, his visage, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of man. Christ, he was astonished. On correction, they were astonished. The people who saw Christ, his visage was marred more than any man. His form, his shape, his body was marred more than any man. What was the Bible saying? He didn't even look like a human being anymore. They beat Christ to what he didn't look like a human being anymore. Yeah. Sin did that. Your sin, my sin did that. Yes. Had more more than any man. As many were amazed at Christ and his sufferings, they couldn't believe what they had suffered. When you think about this, folks, a lot of people didn't even make it to the cross. They died by filling that will. The one just poured the lashes with a wet noodle. The Bible lets us know he was strong. To be thrown. That, that ain't our Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You get two, three switches and wrap them together, my sister was telling me about. No, being thrown was with metal shavings at the yes. end of this other whip. Yes. And every time they would whip Christ, amen, it would, it would engrave, be, the, the shavings would be engraved in his body and shred his body apart. It was more than 40. We don't know how many it was. Yes. But he was marked enough to where he didn't even look like a human being anymore. Why would he go through all that and leave us the same? Come on. That's what I'm saying. Why? I mean, why would he put his body through all that, amen, leave heaven to leave us the same? Yeah. He loves us too much to leave us the same. Mm -hmm. The cruelty of the Romans was depicted with the intent to kill. They were amazed because of what Jesus was going through. Yet he was still walking. Not just walking, but carrying his own cross. He wasn't just walking. He was carrying his own cross. And when he went to the cross, he didn't take anything to alleviate the pain. They tried to give him bitter than God, but he refused it. Yes. Why? Because he wanted to feel the full effects of sin. Yes. He wanted to identify with your pain in your body. Yes. He wanted to identify with your suffering. Yes. At every single point, yet without sin. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful thing, amen, about our God. He identifies with us in every single way, but without sin. Yes. He sympathizes with you. You got a God tonight, you can cast your every single care in your life. Mm -hmm. You got a God right now that'll pick you up, that'll turn you around. You got a God right now tonight that'll put you on solid ground. Mark quit and went back home. He got tired and weary in his mind. But demons have forsaken me. Have they loved this present world? And it's departed of the Thessalonica. Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. On the Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with me. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. Mark forsook the world. He changed up. He was restored. In order to be restored, you have to abandon what got you out of the will of God. Yes. In order to be restored, as the musician begins to come, 
We've got to abandon yes. what first got us out of the will of God. We've got to get back to our first love, like the church in Ephesus. Repent. Get back to your first love. Get back to the God that loved you the most. He'll restore you tonight. He'll make you useful again. He was restored, but he missed how God blessed Paul and Lystra and Derby. In Acts chapter 14, on their first missionary trip, God had healed a group of men who never walked a day in his life. Yeah. Paul didn't have some kind of fancy outline. He just said, with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. The power of God was so present and so thick in that place that all he did was simply speak the words. Evidently, the man yes. had enough faith to receive him. But Paul, I mean, Mark missed all this. He missed how God blessed. He missed how God stoned Paul. I mean, not God stoned Paul, but how the Jews stoned Paul and drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. You see, they were really killing the wrong person. Paul was already dead. They were trying to kill the Jesus in him. They were trying to kill the God that was in Paul. Paul said this, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Folks, when nothing else matters but serving God, You can't stop, won't stop it. God's going to help you. Why don't we stand? Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Paul was already dead. So what they did to him, the persecution he felt, really wasn't even a problem. Folks, what the world does to you, won't be a problem when you cast it upon Jesus. He said, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. He had an attitude, cast out, won't stop. John Mark was restored. He was profitable one more time because he allowed himself to die and he allowed Christ to live in him. Tonight, man, if you got a made up mind, if you got a desire to serve God, get to heaven. You got to embrace and adopt the same attitude. You can't stop, won't stop. When you die, and let Jesus live in you. Why don't we come? Let's find a place to pray as the musician begins to come. I mean, as the musician begins to sing, let's let God have his way tonight.